if it epistaxis epistaxis is one of the most common ear nose and throat emergencies to present to the general practitioner and ENT specialist the management of epistaxis has evolved significantly in recent years including the use of nasal cautery and fab successful treatment required knowledge of nasal anatomy and potential risks and complication of treatment epistaxis is often a simple and readily treatable condition however given the potential consequences of a significant bleed gp and elect general practitioners and ENT specialists should have an understanding of the causes potential risks and emergency medicine what is the definition of epistaxis bleeding from the inside the nose is the epistaxis epistaxis the word epistaxis ep mean from the evo stexis mean drop by drop flow of fluid it is common in all as group what are the arteries supply of the nose to know the uh, causes of epistaxis we have to know the arterial and venous supply of the nose and uh, nose the nasal septum and lateral wall of the nose are supplied by internal carotid system and external carotid system the flow anatomy i have shown here um, the internal carotid artery then it become the ophthalmic artery and it become the anterior ethmoidal artery and posterior ethmoidal artery then external from external carotid artery two branches maxillary artery and facial artery from maxillary artery spinoplatean artery and septal branch of the greater platean artery and facial artery and septal branch of the septal branch of the labial uh, labial artery this spinoplatean artery is the artery of the epistaxis this is called artery of the epistaxis uh, lateral wall of the nasal system is also supplied by the same way internal carotid system and external carotid system so this is for uh, blood sub arterial supply of the lateral wall of the nose and this is maxillary system the history little bit of history about the epistaxis hippocrates in the 5th century was probably the first to appreciate that fresher over the elanagy was an effective method of controlling the nasal bleed so classification of epistaxis how do we classify epistaxis primary and secondary epistaxis that is classification type 1 or three way we classify the epistaxis and in one way it is classified as primary epistaxis and secondary epistaxis and second way we is uh, classify it is as in spontaneous epistaxis and induced epistaxis and third way is anterior and posterior epistaxis when we say it is primary epistaxis almost most common common type of epistaxis is the always the primary epistaxis when the adjacent cause is not known the idiopathic epistaxis is the primary epistaxis secondary epistaxis mean the bleeding from the nose occur then due to secondary to the other causes or secondary to the either due to uh, um, any other um, tumor or disease condition in the nose and peroneal sinuses or secondary to, uh, following a surgery it is called secondary epistaxis spontaneous uh, epistaxis mean when the is when there is nasal bleed without any in, induce spontaneous labor say in is uh, in nasal bleeding during the in, uh, nasal bleeding in juvenile nasopharyngeal angioprioma and induce is say sometime in following surgery there is nasal bleeding that is induced anterior and posterior epistaxis so when we say it is anterior how, how we can how we can um, divide it. it is anterior and it is posterior epistaxis the maxillary sinus ostium serves as the dividing line between the anterior and posterior epistaxis 
the those nasal bleeding come anterior to the maxillary sinus system it is anterior diseases and those nasal bleeding uh, occur posterior to the maxillary sinus system is the posterior epistaxis etiology again the etiology are divided into this this group local factors systemic diseases hormonal factors and idiopathic what local factors occur it's either by trauma or infection in the nose the uh, causes of the nasal bleeding remain in the nose itself it either due to the trauma or infection in the nose trauma to the nose may be the cell implicated the digital finger nose trauma foreign body cocaine abusers etc or secondary to the surgery facial fractures or septal perforation etc infection such as vestibulitis acute rhinitis adenitis atrophic rhinitis leprosy tuberculosis within our granulomatosis any fungal infection on the nose sometime physiologically during puberty extreme cold or hot high altitude and vicarious menstruation etc in tumor like juvenile nasopharyngeal nephroma inverted papilloma and malignancy of the nose what systemic diseases hypertension bleeding diastasis leukemia chronic liver failure chronic liver failure due to chronic alcoholism vitamin k deficiency etc iatrogenically in present is on anticoagulants aspirin phenytoin immunosuppressants and in chronic alcoholic intoxicants now kitchelbeck lectures what is kitchelbeck lectures this can be a short note also known as little seria wilhelm kitchelbeck 1839 to 1902 was a german otolaryngologist james a little was an american surgeon who first described this area in 1879 and kitchelbeck published his paper in 1884 little described this area is about an half an inch from the lower edge of the middle of the column mean that column mean that is septum nasal septum the location or position is it is situated in the anterior inferior part of the nasal septum just above the vestibule here four arteries anastomosis to form a vascular plexus called kitchelbeck plexus here four arteries anastomosis to form vascular plexus called kitchelbeck plexus what are the <coughs> artery that anastomosis here are uh, anterior ethmoidal artery that is the branch of the ophthalmic artery which is also a branch of internal carotid artery septal branch of the sphenoplatean artery which is a branch of maxillary artery which is also a branch of the external carotid artery greater palatine artery is a branch of maxillary artery septal branch of the superior labial artery which is a branch of facial artery what is the significance the surgical importance of this area or little area or kitchelbeck plexus is 90% of the epistaxis is occurring in the little area as it is exposed to the drying effect of the inspiratory air current and fingernail trauma it is the usual site for epistaxis in children and young adult so wood tube plexus Utrups in 1949 reported a group of large blood vessels in the lateral wall of the inferior meatus posteriorly. He was able to visualize this blood vessel using a rigid nasopharyngeal. He coined the term naso nasopharyngeal plexus to describe this vessel. He suspected the association between the presence of this dilated blood vessels and posterior epistaxis. He was not sure whether this vessel are vein or arteries sahin described truth plexus as arterial plexus formed by anastomosis between sphenoplatean artery with posterior pharyngeal artery what is the importance bleeding from blood vessel of root plexus could result in a slow but prolonged os since this blood vessel have no muscle wall hemostasis is full post nasal packing will have to be resorted in rare cases to stop the bleeding 
resuscitation, airway, breathing, uh, and circulations. Clinicians need to assess patients for hemodynamic stability, including pulse and respiratory rate, and look for signs of shock, such as sweating and failure. If patient is actively bleeding, sit them upright, lean the patient forward to minimize swallowing of blood and apply digital pressure at the cartilage as part of the nose for a minimum of 10 minutes. Insert a large bore intravenous cannula. If appropriate, take a blood sample for full blood evaluation and blood group determinations and halt. Consider transfer to an emergency department or refer to a specialist hospital if breathing continues. What assessment we will do? We will, after the patient is stabilized, we will start assessing the patient with complete blood count, BTCT, PT, APTT INR, blood urea, stem ketone for severe blood bleeding. In case, sometimes in case of severe bleeding, there, um, there might be uh, sudden uh, shutdown, kidney shutdown, so blood sugar level, LFT. Sometimes what happens in liver uh, um, hepatic failure due to chronic alcoholism, there is um, intrinsic factor deficiency leading to bleeding, severe bleeding. And ECG if there is any cardiovascular, um, cardiovascular problem. Then diagnostic nasal endoscopy. Nowadays, nowadays uh, very important tool of diagnostic uh, to look at the site of the bleeding and if possible we can we can cauterize the bleeding vessel instantly under direct vision of the endoscope. X-ray nose to rule out any bony destruction in case of malignancy. Uh, now the CT scan of nose and penis in, in case of adults and male to rule out juvenile nasopharyngeal if history suggests so. If history suggests so and MRI angiography it's if history suggests so. Then treatment different phase of management of these stitches to assess the general condition of the patient. One. Secondly to erase the bleeding to treat the underlying cause. To assess the general condition of the patient, assess the amount of the blood loss, record the vital signs, estimate at least the hemoglobin level urgently, treat the shock or hypovolemia. How to stop the nasal bleed? Some simple method pressure on the nose for 5 to 10 minutes, ice pack or call pack over the bridge of the nose, anterior nasal packing, patient is placed on spine position. Nose is anesthetized, there is surface anesthetized. We use to spray the nose with 10% lignocaine. Nose is visualized by nasal speculum and if required, suction clearance is done. Packing is done by strip of gauze soaking BIPP, Bismarck iodine paraffin paste. Packing of nose should proceed inferior to superior and posterior to anterior to avoid injury to the mucosa. Follow up following anterior nasal packing. Systemic antibiotics should be stirred following the application of anterior nasal picking so that there is no infection occur. Analgesics. Analgesic. Adequate analgesics should be given to the patient. Batteries and pack must be removed within 48 to 72 hours to prevent complications. So, nasal packing by non adult synthetic. Now, nowadays, we use, uh, use this uh, non adult synthetic spawns instead of uh, cotton gauze, cotton gauze, um, gauze strip, gauze strip to pack the nasal cavity. The pack is introduced in a dehydrated state and is expanded by instilling saline. As the material expands, it fills the nasal cavity and helps to stop the bleeding by applying pressure against the mucosa. Gel pumping. Then posterior nasal packing. Indications are 
if this tissue is not controlled by ANP and that means ANP and nasal pegging, some surgeries of the nose and nasal brain, say uh, after surgery of the juvenile nasal brain and the problem, technique, the ghost nasal peg is created from the rule ghost peg shock in antibiotic cream, that is BIPP. The peg is secured with silk tie, that is size 0 size silk tie with total treat of 3 treats. After anesthetize the nose and posterior pharyngeal wall, the anesthetize is done by surface anesthesia. That is, ten percent locks. A small red rubber catheter is placed through the bleeding nostril and brought out through the mouth. Two of the silk threads are then secured to the end of the catheter and is used to take the peg into the nasal veins. The peg is facilitated into the nasal veins by directing the peg with fingers. The third tie left protruding from the mouth and it is used to shake and later used for removing the peg. After the end piece position, the two silk tie are tied over the gauze peg over the columella. The peg is left in place for four to seven days. Follow up, after apply application of the posterior nasal pegging, patient should be always hospitalized. Humidified oxygen to be give the patient systemic antibiotic to um, prevent the secondary infections and baseline investigation including ECG. Complications immediate complications are pain, specific electric, hypovolemic shock, trauma to the soft palate, nerves, columella, trauma to the coana. Delayed complications are secondary hemorrhage, adhesion, septal perforations, toxic shock syndrome, peg granuloma. Complications relating to the maintaining peg. If we maintain the nasal peg more than the 48 to 72 hours, then there might be hypoxia, hypoventilists, sometimes even cardiac arrest also, cardiac arrhythmia, sleep apnea syndrome. Infections such as vestibulitis, sinusitis, and station tube dysfunctions. What surgical management? For undergraduate purpose, the surgical management of the epistaxis, uh, it is enough to if, um, remember the name of the surgical procedure, the ligation of the external cavity artery, ligation of the uh, ecmodal vessels, and endoscopic spinability and artery coagulations.